In today's video, we compare the two lightest four-legged backpacking camp chairs on the market, the REI FlexLite Air and the Helinox Chair Zero. Do you remember that article in the Annals of Internal Medicine that was published in 2017? This was a National Institutes of Health study that showed the relationship between prolonged periods of sitting and mortality. And then social media picked it up and said sitting was worse than smoking and sitting causes death and all this kind of stuff. That couldn't have been good for backpacking chair manufacturers. Hello? Do you want a ground cloth or a baby sack? Okay, see ya. We're going on a trip, so Chase needs to borrow gear. After spending a long, hard day on the trail, there's nothing I want to do more when I get into camp than stand up and walk around. Who wrote this? First of all, there seems to be some confusion about what is and is not a camp chair. That's not a camp chair. I'm sorry, no. Nope, uh-uh. I don't think so. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, please, just, just stop. Let's talk about what a chair is. Maybe we need to go back and learn about furniture. Chairs have four legs. They have a seat. Chairs can be hard or soft. And chairs have a back. A chair without a back is not a chair, it's a stool. We're not talking about stools. A chair without four legs and a back is called a pad, and we're not talking about pads. A chair that is hard and has one leg and no back is called a stump, and this video is not about stumps. This video is about chairs, four legs, a seat, and a back. Now, if you're into lightweight backpacking, that sounds like a lot to ask. There are two manufacturers that meet this criteria with chairs that weigh one pound. Wait, what? One of them's lying. Apparently one of them is a fibber. We'll have to investigate that a little bit later. In the meantime, on to the review. Now this, that's a chair. There's a few things we should know about chair design. Let's talk through those just for a few minutes. First, there's the hubs. There's these plastic pieces that are used to connect all the little pieces of tubular aluminum together. Inserted into the hub's holes are these little tubular pieces of aluminum. Between the two hubs, you have the strut. This is usually a thicker piece of aluminum that connects the two hubs and is designed to provide stability to the chair. Coming out of the hubs and going to the ground surface, of course, are the four legs. They come out at an angle so that they provide a stable platform when you sit in the chair. Coming out of the top of the hoods, there are usually two back support rods and two front support rods. Now we're looking at the chair on the side, so we're only looking at two of the legs, one of the back support rods, and one of the front support rods. It's also important to note that this strut can be oriented in one of two different directions. It can be oriented front to back, as in this REI chair, which is kind of what I'm drawing up here. Or in the case of the Helinox chair, the strut is oriented side to side. The final component of the chair, of course, is the seat, which is a layer of fabric that is shaped to cradle your body. Now, if we draw the ground surface here, let's talk about some dimensions that are important. The most important dimension is the seat height. That is the distance from the bottom of the fabric seat to the ground surface. Now for the two chairs we are talking about today, the Helinox has a seat height of 11 inches and the REI has a seat height of 11 inches. This seat height is important because the higher the seat, the less your knees have to bend in order to reach the ground. And bending of the knees can cause some problems for people who have lower back injuries aggravated by flexion of the spine. The second dimension I wanna talk about is the back height. That's the distance from the top of the back of the chair above the ground. Now the Helinox has a back height of 24.5 inches and the REI 
has a back height of 23.75 inches. Doesn't sound like much, but you can notice the difference when you're sitting in it. And this dimension is important because some people prefer a higher back chair so that it doesn't hit them at weird spots on the back. It's different for everybody. You're gonna to have to try out a couple different chairs to find out what's more comfortable for you. But if you're a taller person, you might consider going to the Helinox chair because that's going to cradle your back just a little bit better. The third thing I wanna talk about is this angle at which the front of the chair angles upward off the ground. I'm sorry, did, did the Greek letter cause trauma for some of you? I'm so sorry. Let's just call it leg angle. How's that, you okay? Okay, good. The higher the leg angle, the more your knees are gonna be bent. The lower the leg angle, the more comfortable it will be to put your feet out in front of you and relieve some of that knee bend when you're sitting. The flip side of that is that the higher the leg angle, the deeper you sit inside the chair and often that results in more supportive comfort. So it's a little bit of a trade-off and it's really just gonna depend on your personal preference. Some people like this leg angle to be higher so that they can bring their knees and feet closer to their body. Some like it lower so they can stretch out a little bit. You'll know what the optimally comfortable leg angle is because as you stretch out your legs and lower your thighs in the chair, you start to feel that fabric edge a little bit rubbing against your hamstring. Okay, if we look at the difference between the leg angles, the Helinox has a leg angle of about 10 degrees and the REI chair has a leg angle of about 20 degrees. Doesn't sound like much, but you can definitely notice the difference when you are sitting in the chairs. For me personally, I like to stretch my legs out, so I like a lower leg angle. The Helinox chair is more comfortable for me in that respect. However, that's not the whole picture of comfort. We also have to look at this back angle right here. So let's call this the back angle. Now both chairs have similar back angles. It's about 60 degrees. Now here's where it gets a little bit interesting. So if we have a back angle of 60 degrees and we have a leg angle of 10 degrees, that means we have this radial distance right here that dictates how much flexion is gonna be in your spine. So since there's 180 degrees in this plane and we've already used 70 of it, the Helinox has 110 degrees left over. That's the angle of the seat that you're cradled in. With the REI chair at 20 degrees, then we have 100 degrees left over and you are sitting in a chair at a sharper angle than in the Helinox chair. For some people, this might feel good. For others, it might feel less good. Now, if you're looking at your typical dining room straight back chair, that angle, of course, is 90 degrees. If you're looking for a more chair-like experience, you're gonna want a chair with a sharper angle and the REI chair does give you that experience. It just cradles you a little bit better and puts you in a position that's more seat-like than recliner-like as in the Helinox chair. Okay, let's look at another dimension. Let's look at the difference between the seat height and the back height. This is the seat back height. Both chairs have the same seat height. The Helinox has a higher back height so its seat back height is going to be a little bit higher. This is the dimension you should pay attention to if you're a taller person. You want a longer seat back height for more comfort. Another spec worth mentioning, of course, is the chair capacity. What is the comfort rating in pounds for this chair? For the Helinox, it has a claimed rating of 265 pounds. For the REI chair, it has a comfort rating of 250 pounds. I don't know how they test this. I would take these numbers with a grain of salt and not compare them strictly from manufacturer to manufacturer. But my suspicion is that this is the amount of weight the chair can handle without the seat stretching back into and hitting one of these poles. I'm 165 pounds, so when I sit in a chair, I still have a little bit of clearance before I can feel these poles jam somewhere in my body. Now the clearance isn't much, it's an inch or less, but I can imagine that as you approach these limits, you're gonna start feeling the discomfort of the pole hitting your body as you sink down into the chair. Now, if we look at what the seat is made of, the Helinox is made of a grid stop polyester and the REI is made of a rip stop nylon. There's no practical differences between the two other than weight. The Helinox seat back weighs 4.9 ounces and the REI's weighs quite a bit less at 2.7 ounces. The difference between these two figures, not so much in the actual fabric itself, 
but the REI seat uses less material and its reinforcing fabrics are less robust than on the Helinox. I don't foresee it having any significant impact on long-term durability, so the win here definitely goes to the REI chair. Both chairs use DAC 7000 series aluminum poles. The Helinox poles are blue anodized, the REI poles are orange anodized, they both use about the same length of poles. There's very minor differences in the thickness of the pole walls. In theory, based on the geometry, the REI chair should be a little bit stiffer than the Helinox, but in practice, you don't really notice it. The weight of the Helinox pole set is 12.8 ounces, and the weight of the REI pole set is 13.1 ounce. All right, that helps us answer the million dollar question which is what's the final actual weight on both of these chairs. Both claim a weight of one pound. The Helinox comes in at 17.7 ounces. Such liars. I mean, it's not that big a deal. 1.7 ounces still. The REI chair comes in at under spec at a remarkable 15.8 ounces. Okay, obviously not a huge difference here, but if you suffer from any kind of weight anxiety, your heart palpitates when you see your spreadsheet values change, if you're comparing your lighter pack graphs with other people, then this might be something you should consider. But way more important than this is the comfort that the chair provides for you. In that respect, both of these chairs are very well made. The manufacturing quality is superb and they're both even comfortable for me. And I have kind of a funky back injury. So what I really like to do is change positions often and be comfortable in multiple positions. I can do that more effectively in the Helinox chair because the seat is shallower and that leg angle is a little bit shallower. So I can stretch my legs out in front of me, which really feels good to my back after the end of a long day of hiking. However, I have to admit the deeper seat of the REI chair does allow me to sit in the chair for longer periods of time without having to adjust my position. So it's a toss up for me, but for now I'm taking the REI chair because it's 1.9 ounces lighter. I mean, what are you gonna do? There's room for both innovation and weight saving in the chair market. I do see the potential for using carbon fiber tubing for the leg materials. However, that tubing is gonna to have to be extremely stiff and durable, which means thicker walls, and probably be manufactured with outside ferrules instead of inside ferrules to resist breakage at the ends. Dyneema Composite Fabrics is an obvious choice for the seat. Using the one ounce DCF that's commonly found in cottage industry tent floors, could easily cut the weight of the chair seat in half. The plastic hubs in both of these chairs are very overbuilt, so there's certainly some opportunity for weight savings there. Not all of us weigh 250 pounds and would benefit from a lighter chair that had a lower weight capacity. All of these things could result in a chair that has a similar configuration, a similar geometry, and only weigh 10 to 12 ounces. And I'm pretty sure somebody's innovative enough to take a chair kit combine it with a set of trekking poles and come up with something like one of these two chairs. That gets our butts off the ground so that our feet can be lower than our hips and a nicely slanted back so we can relieve some of this pressure and stress off our joint system as we relax and recover into the evening. You can learn more about these chairs at links below in the video description and click the link above or down in the description below to read more about these chairs in the backpackinglight.com review. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Now, if you didn't like the video, well, maybe you should go sit on your Z-Rest pad for a little bit and be in a timeout and just think about whether or not you're projecting. Want to see more videos about gear, skills, and trips? Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And finally, help us keep our channel advertising free. You can do that by becoming a BackpackingLight.com subscriber. Thanks for watching, everybody, and happy trips.